former Australian chief scientist Alan Finkel is flagging some of the challenges involved with so-called green energy, saying today in the papers we've barely made a dent, he says, in reducing global emissions despite three decades of effort and concern. He says we've shaved off 4% in the last 30 years. This is of emissions. In the next 30 years, we must shave off 83%. 83%. Well, to do that, Finkel says Australia's got to look like this. He says, think forests of wind farms, carpeting hills and cliffs from sea to sky. Think endless arrays of solar panels disappearing like a mirage into the desert. Well, not a good look. I don't like the look at that myself. To get their take on what lies ahead, I'm joined, as always, on a Monday night, former Liberal Minister, Sky News contributor Gary Hargrave, an LNP member, a former Resources Minister, of course, and Electrical Engineer before Parliament, Mr Keith Pitt. Well, gents, welcome. Keith, let's start with Alan Finkel's predictions Peter. there. He says we've fixed 4%, 4% of the emissions problem. He says we've got 83% to go. Given the sort of pain people are experiencing now, how hard are they going to hurt to get to 83%? Well, I'd say Mr Finkel couldn't see the forest for the trees, but he wants to get rid of all the trees. I mean, that, that's just a waking nightmare for me. Uh, forestry, it, it's one of the greatest renewable initiatives you could possibly have. You use timber and you grow it back. Uh, it, it just doesn't get any better than that. But in terms of the cost, I mean, that same report said it could be as much as $100 trillion invested around the world, almost 50 times Australia's entire GDP. And how much difference will it make in Australia in terms of the emissions? Zero. We are a 1% contributor. Won't make much of a difference at all, but it'll make a big difference to people's power bills. That's why I've opposed this as vehemently as I have for such a long time. But the idea of the Australian landscape mm -hmm. will have a tarpaulin of solar panels and a forest of wind farms is just abhorrent. And of course, the business editor at the Australian, Robert Gottliebson, <laughs> also writes in the papers today. Gary, that uh, politicians have made all these undertakings, he says, to achieve vast amounts of uh, renewables in the system, but we need additional copper, he says, other minerals. He says they also didn't consult with the mining industry, meaning they can't achieve these promises because we actually haven't got the resources, uh, the metals like copper, rare earths and, of course, nickel as well. Peter, there's nothing new in this for me. I went to uh, a conference in Sydney a couple of years ago with CETA, the Centre for Economic, Economic Development Australia, and there was an international expert from the British government and he said with all of the new wind farms they want to stick out in the North Sea to obliterate the landscape there, we needed a copper cable one inch thick from Perth, Scotland to Perth, Western Australia. And he told the British government to go and buy a copper mine and better still go and buy a copper cable making company. Well, his predictions have come true because all around the world, all of the, the, the wealthy West is now being destroyed by the woke and the worst of the left. And even the royal family have been completely inculcated by this nonsense. I mean, you've got Prince William appointing Jacinta Ardern as some climate change guru. I mean, spare me. You know, people like Lord Attenborough and all of those people tied up with the World Economic Forum who just simply want to beggar up our economies are getting their wish. We have to fight back on this because these wind turbines are, are not for Australia, uh, the solar panels are not for Australia, and the, what we need, in fact, are more forests. We actually need people to plant more trees, therefore we need dams, and not only that, we need to use coal and indeed possibly yeah. nuclear power. Both of those things are what's going to generate electricity for this country. Forget the wind turbines, forget the solar panels. They beggar up all of our agricultural land, Peter. It's madness. Well, uh, well not wrong, not wrong. But, uh, Keith, how mad are your mob up in Queensland? We're all watching the circus that it's snowy <laughs> 2.0 when the, literally the, the billions of dollars being uh, poured down the sink and it's absolutely blown out in terms of project time. Uh, but Queen Palaszczuk up there, she wants to put the same thing in place, spend $30 billion on pumped hydro. What do are, what are Queenslanders think of this? Oh, what, what a bargain, out. Peter. <laughs> uh, I mean, Barumba, 2,000 megawatts installed generation capacity that'll run off water, it's, it's hydro. Uh, but guess how long it'll run for in terms of the estimates? It's not six months, it's not a month, it's not a week, it is 24 hours, $14 billion. Yeah for something that will run for 24 hours with 2,000 megawatts installed. Uh, and the existing dam that there is, is only 40 gig, and guess what you use it for now? Irrigation for crops and drinking water. 
Uh, and there is significant resistance. Uh, Lou O'Brien, the member up there from Wide Bay, uh, has had any number of calls and he's been to lots of meetings and he's written letters and they're calling for a Senate inquiry. David Pocock, if you're watching, you should back it up because this will be disastrous for the environment. Exactly. Uh, Chris Mitchell in The Australian today, he's a former chief editor, summed it up beautifully. He said, renewable energy, the whole debate is marred by media bias and stupidity. Gary, you're a broadcaster. Yeah. Uh, what's happened to the media yep. here that we can't have a rational debate about the pace of transition? We can't look, you know, at the engineering reality. We've got a lot of industry players last week finally getting out there and saying, forget the eight years to 2030. We're talking about 80 years to get done what governments are promising. Um, wh why the huge conspiratorial lie to date? Well, I think there's a lot of laziness amongst a lot of people in the media, and a lot of them are pillows, Peter. The last person to lean on them leaves an impression. Uh, there are people without experience who are, in fact, involved in the media daily who are reporting things in just a, a really naff way. We are being indoctrinated. Not only that, junior journos are being led upon by those who've been hired by Labor governments around the country. They're the biggest employer of journalists in Queensland. Uh, maybe the Courier Mail, maybe, but it's probably more likely the Queensland government. Uh, it's certainly not the ABC uh, anymore. But, you know, the problem is, Peter, that just there's just not experience. There's just not experience at work. And people aren't questioning. And it is the Gulag archipelago. No one wants to be the first one to stop clapping. In other words, everyone's looking around saying, oh, well, they're all agreeing with that, so we better agree with it too. Look, the reality is coal-fired power is what has delivered our wealth. Take it away from us and we're going to go poor. And we have to take power off the people who are trying to take the power off us, as far as I'm concerned. That includes Chris Bowen. That includes Anastasia Palaszczuk. Chuck them out, to use the Queensland vernacular. Get rid of them. They're bad news.